After my North American Summer Showdown preview and predictions video yesterday, today, as promised, I will now be taking a look at the APAC side of things and revealing my predictions for their regional bracket. Last time around I went over the rules of the Summer Showdown and I don't think there's any need for me to repeat myself, so let's just get straight into it. First of all, let's look at how the APAC standings finished at the end of the June qualifier matches, to see which seeds went to which teams. Shanghai claimed the first seed this time around over Guangzhou, despite both sides going 4-0, due to the Dragon's superior map differential earning them a first round bye to the semi-finals. This meant that the Charge took the second seed, ahead of New York who got the third seed, and the London Spitfire who entered the Summer Showdown with the fourth seed. Just like the main melee, the Summer Showdown for the APAC region sees a much more simplified bracket take effect, with only the second and third seeds choosing their quarterfinal opponents. After the conclusion of last weekend's matches, these teams made their selections, giving us our quarterfinal matches of the Guangzhou Charge against the Chengdu Hunters, the New York Excelsior vs the Hangzhou Spark, and the London Spitfire facing off against the Seoul Dynasty. Let's start with the first of these series to take place on Saturday, the London Spitfire vs the Seoul Dynasty, as on paper I think this is going to be the closest and most competitive game of the APAC quarterfinals, and it's certainly one that I've had a hard time trying to make a prediction for. London come into this contest on an amazing run of form in June, with impressive 3 0 wins over both the Hunters and more recently the Spark, as well as a competitive showing against New York in between. A lot of their success has been the result of brilliant performances from their superstar DPS rookie Glister, as well as consistently impactful displays from Bernard, mainly on Sigma, with the pair bullying their opponents in most of these recent matches. Whilst they've been the standouts, though, that's not at all meant to discredit the rest of his Spitfire team who themselves have been improving and developing arguably more than any other team in the APAC region over the past couple of months. Both Babel and Ulvo have made impactful showings as DPS partners alongside Glister, whilst the support line of Sanguinar and Hylie has surprisingly been strong contributors also. If you had to point to a long shot dark horse of the APAC Summer Showdown, I couldn't criticise you for choosing London given how positive their recent trajectory has been, especially within this current meta. The challenge for this series against Solvo is trying to figure out what sort of dynasty side the Spitfire are going to face. Unlike London, Sol are the polar opposite to consistent improvement and development. But after their amazing main melee, I thought just maybe this squad had turned a corner and would now finally show off their full potential in the build up to the Summer Showdown. I've been a dynasty fan long enough to realise that I shouldn't have been so naive, as it's never that simple with Sol, and the moment you put any ounce of trust or hope in them, that's when they come back to bite you. June has been yet another strange month for them, starting with a convincing 0-3 loss to New York, where the Dynasty didn't even pick up a single capture point. They follow this up with further losses to the Charge in Shanghai, where outside of their map wins, they honestly didn't look that great. In a change of approach, the team played Michelle at off tank for their final qualifier match against the Hunters, and personally I thought he had an excellent series. Since Sigma's release, Marvel has looked great on the hero, but even though statistically he continues to perform well, I think his flanking playstyle has become a little predictable, whilst his offerings on other off-tank heroes have been rather poor. But the Summer Shredder, I really want Sol to stick with Michelle, as I think they'll be able to be more adaptable with their compositions if he starts. Am I confident they'll do this though? Absolutely not. If everyone on the Dynasty plays to their full potential, with profits popping off and gesture not feeding, then without a doubt Sol defeats Spitfire here, as they definitely have a stronger squad. However, I just can't trust them, and it really pains me to say that I think I'm going to have to go with the team I like the least in the league, London, to come out on top in this series and win 3-2. As I'm continuing with my theory that until the Dynasty show me some more consistency, I'm going to expect nothing from them. The match afterwards between the Guangzhou Charge and the Chengdu Hunters I believe is a much simpler prediction. This is a rematch of their Week 21 series from last weekend, but heading into it, I raised the potential for an upset after the Hunters took the charge to the distance during their previous meeting before the start of the main melee. By no means was it a completely dominant showing from the charge. I mean, they did end up dropping a map to the Hunters, but at no point did they really feel under threat of losing the series. A big reason for this was another brilliant performance from Krong and Sigma, who for me is currently the clear frontrunner and favourite for the Rookie of the Year award. He just never seems to have a bad game, and consistently look like the best player on what is a very strong and consistently impressive roster. It helps Guangzhou that Happy has been on a hot streak lately also, with some nutty plays on Widow and Ash. Some of the charge players have openly admitted that when Happy isn't feeling it, he can underperform, but when he's on the top of his game, as he is right now, he is one of the best in the league at his position, and if he can keep up this level of play, he could light up the Summer Showdown. With the Chargers only loss in the last two months being their nail-biting 3-2 defeat to the Seoul Dynasty at the main melee, I just don't see any way they falter against Chengdu here. 
The Hunters are unfortunate to be in such a strong region, because I do think they would be able to beat a handful of teams in North America. That said, they really haven't been able to put together a complete performance in quite some time. And personally, the only way I can see them finding success in this series is if they run more of their Jinmu Genji comp, as he was the primary reason why they were able to come away with a map win on Gibraltar. As I said though, I don't expect the Charge to struggle here, and that's why I'm predicting them to win this series rather comfortably with a 3-1 scoreline. The last of the quarterfinals pits the New York Excelsior against the Hangzhou Spark, which was a matchup I wasn't expecting to see at the Summer Showdown. The reason I say this is because New York, with the third seat, actually had the choice of either the Spark or Dynasty for this series, and considering over the past few weeks they have dominated Seoul in one game, whilst losing to Hangzhou in another, on paper I thought the choice would be rather simple. With the Excelsior deciding to go with the Spark though, I can only come up with two reasons why they went in this direction. Perhaps after seeing Hangzhou really struggle in Week 21, they had confidence they could win their rematch. Meanwhile, they may have thought that Seoul were more unpredictable and stronger than their recent results have shown. Either way, New York against the Spark is a series we're going to see, and I do believe it will be the Excelsior who come out on top this time round. Although they were defeated with a charge last week, they took what looks to be the second best team in Asia right to the very edge, whilst putting on a really strong performance themselves. After having a couple of weeks to build up the synergy of a returning Nene and Haxel into the starting lineup, the Excelsior now look like they're starting to really find their groove, and if they start implementing some Genji comps with Haxel at the reins, they could be a team that gives Shanghai some difficulty in the near future. For the Spark, I think they'll need to go back to the basics after a poor week but didn't see them win a single map. Moving away from the Ashen Tracer that they played the week before, Godsby and Architect looked a little uncomfortable and were often caught out of position either on Echo or Woodermaker. Whilst at the same time, their support pairing with Bebe and Mika struggled against their opposite numbers on both the Spitfire and Dragons. With the slight shift in the meta, I don't think a repeat of their Week 20 display against New York will be enough to see them come out on top this time, so if they are to achieve victory, I think they'll need to innovate in some way, perhaps by utilising a new Genji composition for instance. At the end of the day though, I think I was a little too quick to praise the Spark after their win over the Excelsior last time around, and with both these sides entering the Summer Showdown with opposite momentum, I'm going to have to stick with my gut and say that New York comes out on top of the 3-1 winners to end Saturday. This just leaves me with the rest of the bracket to fill out, which again, like with the NA side of things, is something I can't guarantee will be correct ahead of time. Based on my predictions though, I've got the Shanghai Dragons playing the London Spitfire in one semi-final, whilst the Guangzhou Charge face off against the New York Excelsior in the other. For the first series, you could certainly make the argument that the Spitfire have the potential to cause some problems if players like Glister and Bernard are on the top of their games. And indeed, the main melee has proven London's ability to force Shanghai to their limits, with the Dragons only winning 3-2 on that past occasion. Shanghai though are unquestionably the best team in Asia, and with a whole week of preparation for the Spitfire or Dynasty, I don't see there being many scenarios where they don't come out on top, especially considering how they've come away with dominant wins over both of these sides just in the last month. London might be able to pick up a map, but I'm pretty confident Shanghai will advance to the final when it's all said and done. The other semi-final though between the Charge and Excelsior is a much more interesting contest to look at. Their five map series from just last week highlights how evenly both of these sides are, and I think it could genuinely be a toss up on the day. If New York were to win, I believe it would be through some form of Hacks or Genji play, but my gut keeps pulling me in the Charge's direction. I just think back to so many series where Guangzhou have played, where despite it being close, they come out on top in the end. I mean that's basically been this past month, with 3-2 victories over Seoul, Hangzhou and New York. You know, I reckon they're going to do it again, so I'm going to just give it to the charge in a 3-2 victory, but I'm hoping for a fantastic series either way. This will give us a final of the Shanghai Dragons vs the Guangzhou charge, and whilst I think this could be a very entertaining series, like the NA region, there just seems to be one inevitable outcome. No one's been able to overcome the Dragons since their odd loss to the Hunters back in March, and with the quality on display across the Dragon squad, from Fletcher and Lip at DPS, to Fearless and Void on the tank line, and Lee J Gong and Izaki at support, I have to say that the Dragons come out the victors here, which is why I'm predicting them to win in the final and become the champions of the APAC Summer Showdown. That's just what I think though, so let me know who you think's winning down in the comments below. For now that's all I've got to say on my Apex Summer Showdown preview and predictions, so if you have reached the end of the video then I'd say a big thank you for watching. I might be putting together one more video over the coming days, otherwise you'll next be hearing from me next Monday as I review all the action from the Summer Showdown this weekend. So if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out on these future videos then please be sure to like the video and subscribe, also consider following me on Twitter or at my Discord. Until next time though, stay safe and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.